how's it going guys welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in so out for another day in the woods here with the two dogs so the plan for today is uh i'm heading in this old woods road now and when we get in a little further uh, there's an old growing up trail i uh, did a bit of rabbit snaring there a few years ago but uh, the alders are all growing up and stuff now so we're gonna head in there uh cut out that trail a little bit clear it out so we can get through more easily and i'm gonna be setting out some rabbit snares and uh, maybe a few coyote snares as well i got my general trappers license again this year so i might set out a few coyote snares and a little bit later uh we're gonna get a fire going cook up a feed of moose so that's gonna be good so i got my little uh, 17 hmr rifle with me here today so who knows maybe we'll uh we'll see something to uh take a shot at a grouse or a rabbit or whatever the case may be so yeah i'm gonna try and set out i don't know maybe 20 20 or so rabbit snares and a few coyote snares if i see any uh good coyote sign around and then we'll leave it for a couple of nights we'll come back and check them hopefully we'll pick up a rabbit or two and uh may even do a, a catch and cook type video here if we lock into a rabbit so stay tuned for that as well Well, trail's growing in pretty bad here with alders, so I'm gonna get out the saw now, try and clear some of this away so we can get through here a little easier when we're checking the snares. So, I'm my trusty Silky saw, Silky Gomboy here. Had this one for a few years now, starting to get in a little bit of rough shape. So I need to pick up a new blade for it, but still gets the job done. So, good little spot right here. So it looks like uh, there's two ways that the rabbits are going. They're going through here, and I just set a snare right here. Uh, was, there was a stick here from, from last time I was in here, so I just tied the snare after that one. But it also looks like they're going out through this way as well. So I'm gonna put a snare right here on this path. Now I could have just blocked this one off and forced them to go this way, but uh, I got lots of snares here, so I'm gonna put another one right here. And uh, yeah, this looks like a looks like a pretty promising spot to pick up a rabbit. Lots of fresh uh, fresh rabbit droppings around here as well. So, so I'm just gonna cut a stick now to tie my snare off to. So I usually just use a, either an alder like this one here, or sometimes I use like a small spruce tree or fir tree, but. Lots of alders around here, so I'm gonna grab this one. So I like to use a stick about, I don't know, maybe close to an inch or so in diameter. You don't wanna use something too small, uh, something that the rabbit can break off. So this one here should do fine. Just cut some of the limbs off. And I'm gonna leave it long just in case the rabbit happened to, to pull the stick out of the ground. So I'm gonna make my loop about the size of my fist or maybe a touch bigger. I'm 
And then all I do, I like to triangle around the stick at least twice. I find you have less breakages if you do that. And then I'll leave my hand through the loop and hold on to it right here. And then wrap that as tight as possible around the tree and just keep keep twisting it around so you want to go around here at least half a dozen or maybe eight or ten times actually is better all right so that's done you want to avoid kinking the wire because this brass wire breaks easy enough as it is so don't want to put any kinks in it and then you see how so I like to pull the wire like this and that kind of loads the snare and uh, that'll give it the tendency to want to close faster when the rabbit puts his head through. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna grab a stick here, a guide stick to put on the side. Something a little bigger actually would be better. Put that there to guide them through. Maybe put one on the other side as well. And then a little chin lifter on the bottom. So we gotta rise his head up as he goes under. Yeah, that should be good. On to the next one. All right, so there's a nice little rabbit lead here. This is a, a snare that I set out pretty much every season. I always pick up a couple of rabbits in this one. So I already got the stick here from last time. So uh, just gonna raise it up a little bit, make sure it's good and secure, and it is. So yeah, nice little lead here. Rabbits use this one quite often. So anyways, I'm going to uh, get a new snare out now, tie on here. So, I'll make my snare about the size of my fist, or a little bigger. And then, all I do, I just... I like to go around the stick at least twice if I have enough uh, enough wire, which I do. So I'll go around the stick twice, and then when you tie this off here, you want to get it as tight as possible on that stick. So that way if the rabbit comes through uh, and his head doesn't go directly into the loop, uh, the snare won't push out of the way or move around on the stick. It'll stay put and then hopefully his head will go right in that snare and we'll get him right around the neck. So yeah, then I just wrap it around uh, about, I don't know, eight to ten times or so. And then make sure I got a nice round loop. So yeah, that's pretty much perfect right there. Uh, adjust the camera a little bit. Okay. So, it's about uh, four fingers or so off the ground. And sometimes I'll take a little stick, a dead stick like this, and just put here. And that's just a little chin lifter stick. So if the rabbit's got his head close to the ground as he's coming through, he'll have to, uh, to lift his head up as he goes, goes underneath the stick and into the snare. So I'm going to set another snare right here now. So 
So uh, when I'm heading out to set a bunch of snares like this, like I'm doing today, I like to get them ready ahead of time. So last night I made up, uh, I think it was 35 snares. So I got them all together here. I just put them in a, tie them all together in a bit of a loop like this and put them in my pocket. And that way, as I'm going along the trail, uh, I can just grab one and uh, makes it a lot, uh, a lot faster and a lot more efficient. So. Yeah, we got a nice little path here. And uh, I already got a tree here. I had a, a snare here in the past as well. So I'm gonna tie the snare right onto this one, I think. Actually, maybe this one will be better. This is a, a tree that's rooted into the ground, so it should be strong enough. So yeah, we'll set another one here and we'll move on to the next one. So I got my snares plenty long here today. So I'm gonna go around the tree probably three times. And like I said before, right here, you really wanna get this tied as tight to the tree as possible. Another trick too is to keep your hand through the loop like this as you're twisting it onto the tree. And uh, that keeps the snare from twisting around and getting out of shape on you. So I'm using 22 gauge brass wire, which is what we have to use here in Newfoundland. Can't use the stainless steel stuff anymore because of the pine marten. And this brass can be a little bit finicky sometimes to get it to sit exactly the way you want it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that one. So on we go down the trail. Alright, so we got a good little rabbit lead here. So I just set up a snare right here on this stick. Yeah, he comes down through, crosses the trail here. Molly's standing on the trail. Trail goes this way. So he crosses right here and comes in through here. And goes up through here. So this looks like a real good lead and looks like it's beaten down a lot and there's some fresh droppings. So I'm gonna set another snare over here now. So I'll have two snares on that lead. So hopefully we'll snag one here tonight. So, got that one set up. Yeah, good lead here, so just a matter of time. I think we're gonna pick up a rabbit or two in this one. Goose, hook, oh, hook. Oh. Ready, go. Oh boy, bring it in. Oh boy, come on, let's go. Good boy. All right, so we've been going for a few hours here now. Got quite a few rabbit snares set out. So uh, I just came to this little spot here. I saw a little bit of coyote sign back the trail a little ways. So uh, I'm gonna set a coyote snare right here now. It's like a little uh, game trail coming through here. And there's a ridge or a hill up on this side. So uh, should be a good spot to set one. So normally if I'm going out to set coyote snares, uh, I'll leave the dogs at home. Because uh, it's, it's hard to set with, with the dogs here. It's not so bad with the rabbit snares, but the coyote snares, uh, last thing I want to do is get one of the dogs tangled up in a coyote snare. So... But anyways, I am going to set a couple here today. I threw a couple in my bag there this morning, so I just got to keep an eye on the dogs now as I'm setting them. And uh, yeah, I think I got four or five here to set out, so I'll set uh, set that many out. And then uh, another day when I'm heading out to just set coyote snares, like I said, I'll leave the dogs back at the cabin for a couple hours, and uh, it'll be a lot easier for setting. All right, so first coyote set of the day. 
So I got my snare here. This is a 332nd uh, cable that we're using. Like I said, we got to keep an eye on the dogs now so they don't run through here. So I'm far from an expert when it comes to uh, coyote snaring. Uh, it's something that I've just been getting into in the past few years. So I just got my, uh, my trapping license, I think three years ago for the first time. So but yeah, uh, I usually manage to pick up uh, a coyote or a fox or two every season. I don't set out a whole lot of these snares, but Anyways, like I said, I'm going to put out a few here today, and maybe we'll get lucky and pick one up. So, I go with uh, roughly a 12-inch uh, loop for coyote, and roughly 12 inches off the ground. So, something like that should do. I don't like to put a whole lot of guide sticks and stuff because coyotes are pretty, uh, pretty smart and pretty cautious. So if you if you put too many trees and stuff around, uh, sometimes they'll catch on and they won't run through there. So I like to keep uh, keep the, the trail as natural as possible. So yeah, that should do. So uh, we'll head down the trail now, see if we can find a spot to set out a couple more. All right, so here's the set. And I got a little bit of this coyote urine. I've had this kicking around for a few years now, so I'm gonna use the rest of it up here today just to get rid of it. So I'll throw a bit of this here on one of these trees and yeah, we'll see what happens. Whew, that stinks. Man, what a strong smell. Whoo! So, we're just setting up the coyote snare here now. Uh, so I just tied my cable off to the tree here, over, over to my right. So I got it anchored off on a, a good solid tree. And there's a little path coming through here. So, I didn't have any luck in this one last year. But, uh, it's easy enough to set it all back up here, so... I'm gonna put another one here this year and see uh, see if we have any luck. So yeah, I got a bit of 12 inch loop here and it's roughly 12 inches off the ground. Now there's a stick here uh, that the coyote would have to jump over to get through here. So I got it a little higher than 12 inches off the ground this time. So yeah, that should be good. So on to the next one. So there's a spot here, it looks like somebody dumped uh, a bunch of moose fur and scraps and uh, I was here a couple of weeks ago actually and there was a lot more of it left here then so I saw some fresh coyote sign just back the trail so and you can see where they've got a bunch of the bones and stuff dragged down through the woods here so uh, I think what I'm going to do is come back here uh, a little later today if I have time before dark uh, I'll leave the dogs back at the cabin and uh, I'll come back and set out maybe half a dozen or so coyote snares all around this area here see if I can find a couple of spots where they're coming in from the trees to, uh, to get at this bait so yeah maybe I'll do that all later this afternoon or uh, tomorrow morning
Well, got the fire rocking here now. Just warming up my hands a little bit. So it's a pretty chilly day here today. I think it's about uh, plus two or plus three degrees Celsius. Supposed to be the high for today. So anyways, it is, uh, it's almost 1 p.m. So we've been on the go now for about five hours or so. So I'm starting to get pretty hungry here now. So on the menu, uh, we're keeping it simple here today. I got some bottled moose from this year's moose. Uh, bottled up, I think, 10, 10 bottles or so. And I got a couple of slices of homemade bread to go with it. So I'm just gonna throw that in the frying pan here in a second and, and warm up the moose. And uh, yeah, should be good. So this may not look like the most appetizing meal to some people, but uh, I'll tell you if you like moose meat, uh, bottled moose is an excellent way to eat it. So basically this is uh, a lot of the tougher cuts of meat I'll save for either grinding up for burger meat or bottles like this. And uh, yeah, when you cook it in the bottles, uh, it comes out super tender, so this stuff will just fall apart in your mouth. It's so tender, you can see it just breaks apart with the fork. So, let this heat up a little bit. Like I said, it's already cooked, so it just needs to warm up. Then, I'm gonna toast up my bread a little bit on the fire, and man, this is gonna be good. Put a homemade bread dipped down in this juice with the moose meat. Oh man gonna be good All right, we're calling it done. Set the grill off to the side here. Throw on some more wood. Soak up some of that juice with this nice homemade bread. Try a piece of this moose meat. Oh yeah. Oh man, it's good. Nice and tender, like I said. It just falls apart in your mouth, it's so tender. I'll get the dogs a piece here now in a minute. <laughs> Molly's not gonna go too far away from me now while this is on the go. Are ya? You getting smoked out? So 
So I'm filming everything on the GoPro here today. Uh, I usually uh, bring my Sony camera and I use that most of the time and then I'll just use the GoPro uh, for action shots or you know for when I'm beating through the woods or whatever. But uh, I decided to, <clears throat> to leave the, the big camera home today and uh, just film everything on the GoPro. So it's a bit of a hassle with the other camera. Uh, you can't get it wet and you know you got to be careful with it. You can't beat it around like like the GoPro. So I decided to keep it simple today and just uh, just bring the GoPro and film everything on that. So let me know what you think of the uh, the quality of the video here. Anyways, I'm gonna finish up this moose and uh, then I'm gonna get the kettle on and boil up some water for a coffee. Good dogs. Good dogs. Sit. Well, got a nice hot coffee mixed up here now. So that's gonna warm me up even more. Fire is really nice too here now, throwing off a lot of heat. So yeah, we had a great day so far. Uh, we're gonna stay out for another couple of hours here. Uh, we'll stay out till just before dark, make a full day of it. So yeah, I set out probably, I don't know, close to 20 rabbit snares or so, I would say. And I think four coyote snares. So, yeah, hopefully we'll pick up a couple of rabbits at least. So, uh, anyways, uh, I'm thinking it'll probably be a part two to this video. Or, uh, you know, on the next video, I'll, I'll come in take you guys along as I check the snares. And we'll have another cook-up. Uh, so, if we get a rabbit or two, I'm thinking I'll probably uh, clean a rabbit and cook it up on the fire in the next video, so stay tuned for that. So I actually had a, a canoe trip planned for this weekend. I was going to head out yesterday uh, for a late season canoe trip and uh, camp out last night, but the weather forecast uh, kind of ruined that plan, so... Uh, yesterday yesterday evening we had 80 kilometer wind gusts and we had 15 millimeters of rain uh, overnight last night so I had to scrap that plan unfortunately uh, would have been nice to squeeze in one last canoe trip here before the ponds and lakes and stuff freeze up which is gonna happen here uh, pretty much any day now I think but yeah uh, that's all we can do I wasn't gonna take any chances this time of year uh, heading out in high winds in the canoe so anyways I scrapped that idea and uh, just glad I was able to get out here for the day today so I figured I'd take the camera along and uh, I've been wanting to do some more hunting videos and stuff on the channel here but I just haven't really had much time to be at it here lately so yeah I figured I'd take the camera along and Film a bit of uh, rabbit snaring and that kind of thing. So we'll see, see how those videos do on the channel. I may do more of them here in the future, but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I'm probably not going to record much else today uh, unless we we see anything exciting or whatever. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks uh, to everyone for tuning in and following along. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet feel free to go ahead and hit the subscribe button it really helps the channel out and uh, don't forget to leave a comment and hit the like button all that good stuff it really helps me out so anyways thanks a lot for all the support so far hope you guys are enjoying the videos and we'll see you on the next one